This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good, Good evening, everybody. This is the uh, Welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the, uh, the month of October 7th, 2019. My name is Vern Carlson, and I'm the chairman of the commission. Um, we have, uh, I'm going to introduce the, uh, our staff to you and, and the commission, and then I'll give it to you how, it, how this thing really works. Out to my extreme right is, is uh, uh, Andy Bellavacqua, he's our town engineer. Next to him is Alan Fredrickson, land use administrator. To my extreme left is Mary Lee Radjuski, she is our court reporter. Next to her is Pam Miller, she is our staff secretary. Jim? Jim Gilletti, regular member. Teresa Ranciato Vili, regular member. Ron Penton, vice chair. Joe Salamini, alternate. Okay, but before we get going, we're, we're missing one of our regular members uh, tonight, and in his place will be sitting uh, Joe Salamini as an alternate. He'll be on as a regular member tonight. And what's going on here is we do have some public hearings, and uh, with the public hearing, as well as any, the applicant will have the opportunity to explain it to both the public and to the commission. After the commission has satisfied their your interest in it, I will open up to the public on the public hearings and we'll hear the pro and the cons for both sides uh, on the uh, on the public hearings. Certainly going into uh, uh, going to deliberation, um, there is no input in deliberation and site plans, there is no no, no in public input in site plans either. So with that being said, um, Alan, is there any change to the agenda? Well, there is. Item number one, uh, P19-24, the applicant has requested to continue that item, so that'll be heard on the 12th of November at our next meeting. So that will not be heard. The other thing that we were going to do, we have an executive session that we had placed at the end of the agenda, but we've got a few scheduling issues with that and we wanted to do the executive session immediately, I think it should take less than five minutes okay. uh, in so the executive session. Before we get into any public hearings, that, uh, I just want to go, if there's anybody here for, um, for the Middletown Avenue application, that will not be heard tonight, it's going on to next month, is that it, Alan? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, with that being said, before we get into anything, uh, Jim, you want to get Yeah, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session, invite our town attorney and staff, Andy Bebelakwe and Alan Fredrickson, to the executive session with us. I'll Good. second that. Okay, we have a motion, second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Folks, we're going to go into executive session, which is just in the back room. We'll only be a few minutes. I promise you we won't hold you up any longer than absolutely necessary. We'll be right back. We lied. Yeah, I think we're ready. <coughs> okay, we're ready, Jim. Okay, folks. Okay. All right, folks, we're back. Now we're ready. Jim? I make a motion that we exit executive session. I will second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Good. Well, first we got to make a motion to go into deliberations about the pending litigation of 576 Washington Avenue LLC. Okay. I'll second so that. Okay, second. All in favor. I motion second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. To resolve the pending litigation, I make a motion that we modify our July 1st, 2019 decision on application P1921, the site plan application of 576 Washington Avenue LLC, by removing the condition of approval requiring the planting of four deciduous trees along the front setback adjacent to Washington Avenue and replace it with a new condition of approval requiring the planting in a location or locations to be selected by town staff in the rear yard which abut 43, 45, 47, and 49 Coventry Circle for the placement of eight green giant arborvitae of five to six feet in height 
to be installed by the property owner with the other buffer plantings prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy to augment the buffer. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So then I'll make a motion that we exit deliberations on 576 Washington Avenue. I'll we'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We now good? We're back in regular session. Thank you. Want me to read this now? Very good. Uh, we're going to go on to our first site plan, which is P19-25. Right. Teresa Vili will sit in for acting secretary for this meeting only. Okay. So it's actually public hearing number 19-25. Subdivision application of Senior Luxury Housing, LLC, applicant FPJ Investments, LLC, owner for eight lots relative to 79T, 87, 87T, 91, 95, and 95 Warner Road. Map 40, lots 39 through 44. Plan entitled Proposed Cluster Resubdivision, 79T, 87, 87T, 91, 95, and 95 Warner Road, North Haven, Connecticut. Prepared by Malone and Rich Broom, dated June 25, 2019, scale 1 inch equals 80 feet, R40 zoning district. Now, okay, if I'm good. correct, <coughs> I'm going to take two applications together, so she, yeah. Teresa, should read in okay. the, the special permit as well. We're going to do this, so P19 25S. Special permit application as authorized by section 2.5.1 of Senior Luxury Housing LLC applicant. FPJ Investments LLC owner for eight lots relative to 79T, 87, 87T, 91, 95, and 95 Warner Road, map 40, lots 39-44. Plan entitled, proposed cluster resubdivision, 79T, 87, 87T, 91, 95, and 95 Warner Road, North Haven, Connecticut, prepared by Malone and McBroom, dated June 25, 2019. Scale one inch equals 80 feet, R40 zoning district. Okay, very good, thank you. Very good. Very good. Good evening, my name is Mike Bennett. I'm a professional land surveyor in the state of Connecticut, the principal with Bennett Squareless Associates, 415 Killingworth Road, Higginham, Connecticut. Uh, also here with me tonight is John Gilmore of the Roman Field. And I'd just like to start off and give you a general presentation uh, of the plans. And then I'm going to kick it over to John to get into some of uh, more detailed engineering. Yeah, Vern, can I break it for just a second? Sure. One of the comments, and I don't mean to short circuit your, your proceedings at all, but one of the comments says you need to provide verification of proposed ownership of the open space parcel. Um, the reason I'm concerned, and I bring it up, is I don't know what your intention is, but the last one by this developer involved the land trust, of which I'm part. So if it's to be the land trust, and I have no idea because it doesn't seem like it's identified, which is a concern, um, if it's not, that's fine. I'm not advocating for the land trust. I just want to disqualify myself if that's where we're going to be headed. Okay, our, our proposal uh, that I was going to get to later on will be to donate it to the town of North Haven okay. if they want it. I'm good. Okay. That's fine. If they do not want it, then we would create a homeowner's okay. okay, fair enough. Thank you. So, uh, just in general, the, the subdivision is located on the east side of Warner Road. Um, it's uh, opposite Deer Run Lane. And then you have uh, to the north Longview Drive and a little further to the south uh, Timothy Drive. Um, the total property encompasses both uh, North Haven and North Brantford. Uh, there's a total of 109.7 acres in this property. We are only dealing with uh, the North Haven portion of the property applications and that consists of uh, 28.892 acres and it is divided by the town line here and our surveys for our subdivision map um, go to the town line. Um, Uh, 
topography uh, wise, the property generally slopes from Warner Road down to the east and north. Uh, you see a couple of wetland areas back here in this corner. Um, we are not proposing to do anything back in this area. Up in this area, you will see um, a, wet, a water course that was defined uh, by the soil scientists, and there is a 50-foot upland review area around that, um, and we will be addressing that as, as part of the application. Um, this plan uh, that you see here um, is the conventional plan. Uh, as you see it, you have um, five frontage lots, uh, a long rear lot um, on the north side, and then the second rear lot on the south side of the property, uh, and then a 50-foot wide strip of land going into what we are uh, defining as lot eight. That would be reserved for future use in the subdivision. Um, when looking at this proposed plan, you'll also note that two lots... Excuse, excuse me one second. There's two different plans here. This is a conventional plan. Which one are you applying for? We're applying for the open place, open space subdivision. Plan. You're not applying for this? We're not applying for this. So, so why, are why, are we why are you describing this? A, part of, a part of the requirement in the regulation is to validate the cluster plan by providing a conventional subdivision plan. They're not permitted to get any additional lots relative to a conventional plan. So I think that's Mike correct. is just going through to show the okay. conventional. I was just confused, so thank you. Okay. All right, so, so um, again, the only other comment I really have on this, if you know lot one and two, uh, they both are affected uh, by the uh, wetland area here, the water course, and the upland view <coughs> area. Moving on um, to the open space cluster plan, you see the same uh, essential configuration of frontage lots. Um, and in this case, we have one rear lot. But we've created along <coughs> the whole north side of this an open space parcel so that meets uh, the requirement of 10% of the land area of the North Haven property. Um, we have two frontage lots, a strip for a future road, then we have four more frontage lots and only one rear lot as opposed to the other. Um, we believe um, this concept is in conformance with the open space uh, cluster regulations uh, because it protects natural environment, preserves wetlands, utilizes Existing road frontage extends sewer and promotes preservation of open space. And it's important to point out that this open space parcel is a long par parcel. It's got the wetlands area on the north side of it, but it also has frontage and plenty of access for water road on it. It's not stuck off in the back someplace. Um, it's got good access to the road. Uh, this open space parcel consists of 2.89 acres of land. And as I stated before, um, the intention would be of the developer will be to donate this to the town of North Haven or if the town does not want to get to create a homeowners association uh, for that. Uh, this property is served by public water and sewers. Mm. Uh, 
a wetlands permit uh, was granted uh, for Ju granted on July 24, 2019. Um, as part of that wetlands permit, uh, we will be removing this building and other site improvements in this area, which consist of fences and and other sheds and some uh, miscellaneous miscellaneous farm equipment and, and stuff that we left as part of that, but as part of removing this building, uh, the, uh, we will be doing restoration of the disturbed areas and planning uh, the buffers with, uh, uh, with the landscape that was required uh, as part of the wetlands permit. Um, in, in reviewing um, comments from town staff, um, we have uh, no issues at all with uh, the planning and zoning comments. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm willing to address all of those as conditions of approval. Um, I would like to. Um, uh, although we have no issues with the engineering comments as well, uh, I would like to uh, further explain uh, a couple of those. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we would add a note to the record subdivision map in the engineering plan that essentially indicates that uh, stormwater measures um, will be incorporated into final site plans for each house. Uh, by doing that, we will most likely be putting uh, infiltrated chambers in to uh, store additional water created by impervious surfaces for roof leaders and driveway drains. Excuse me a second. Yes. I'm going closing the door. It's oh, sure. distracting. Thank you. reiterate this was a condition of the engineering but uh, reports but the removal of the bunk, the bunkhouse and this wetland review area will be uh, restored in conformance to the requirements of the wetlands approval uh, okay. and this just to get in the, the next comment dealt with um, storm water uh, that goes to a uh, detention pond south, further south of this property on Timothy Drive. Um, we've done a couple things to eliminate, eliminate and mitigate some of that runoff. First of all, this area of the rear lot, currently there's a drainage snail the uh, drainage well that runs across here uh, ties into a existing pipe here and then goes uh, discharges on to the property to the south which goes towards this wetland. What we've done is we've regraded the property. You'll see the contour here. That's going to pick up the water that normally came into that drainage wheel and bring it further into this property and not to the south. We are also proposing to cap that pipe that runs off to the south into that property. Um, let me just ask a question at this point of the town engineer, Al. Over the years, haven't there been times when the town had to go in? and pump water out of that pond to yep. alleviate flooding on Timothy Drive? Yeah, the comment is there primarily, not necessarily for this phase, because there's not an awful lot that can happen as part of this phase, but for future phases of development of this subdivision, um, to because future phases of the subdivision are going to have to have their own drainage system uh, to be able to carry storm water. And all that comment was there for was uh, to encourage them to provide us with a means to uh, to address the, that issue that we have with that pond. So, in other words, I, 
provide the ability for us to connect into that drainage system to help to drain the pond and solve some of those drainage problems that we have over there. What form or format that takes, I'm not really sure. They've not developed a phase two plan yet, but I put that comment in there just to kind of plant that seed that that's something that, that I'd like to be able to talk to them about as they're working in the planning for the next phase. That's really So you're, that, no, so you're okay with it happening in phase two? Well, I think that's the only way it could happen. I mean, otherwise we're gonna, you know, otherwise they'd have to install a, a, a drainage that ran all the way across their entire property without having planned the next phase. And I don't think that that's a fair, uh, you know, condition for us to put on them. Uh, but I'd like to be able to work with them when the second phase of this thing happens to see what can be done and what uh, improvements can be made to help with that issue. But if the town had to get in and pump it now, how would they get in there to do that? Well, I guess what's been done previously is it's been pumped out into the existing uh, fields that are there. Correct. And um, so wouldn't we need an easement to do that? It, ultimately, yeah, if we were going to do... Well, if we approved this, wouldn't we need an easement to get through here? To, to be able to do that pumping? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I just... Or just, you know, an agreement to allow us to do that. I mean, however, whatever form that takes, but... Okay, do you have an objection to that? I mean... Uh, no, I actually have some additional information I'd like to submit okay. uh, that uh, uh, reflects that. Uh, first of all, I'd like to step back. When this two-lot subdivision was approved at the end of Timothy Drive, um, there were certain things that were addressed to help deal with that... Uh, um, issue before. Uh, first of all, on the west side of this property, a 25-foot uh, easement was created uh, and given to the town. So this is where we used to pump it out before we provided an easement for that back there. Um, also, um, at the end of Timothy Drive, and this is where you get into further subdivision of this property. Um, there are two catch basins currently at the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, this, in this property, there's a 25-foot drainage easement that was reserved across this lot, lot two. Um, and there was also a 50-foot right-of-way uh, that was dedicated to the town of North Haven as part of this subdivision so that this road could be extended and the drainage could be extended in the future. So at some point when we get into this, we'll be looking at taking this drainage that formerly picks up this cul-de-sac area and instead of going out this pipe and discharging it into that pond, we will block this off and run the drainage north into this property. And uh, and that would help again mitigate some of the drainage Excuse that's going into the property. Um, so what I've, I've, well, uh, while you got just, here, excuse me, while you still got that up there, the 25 foot drainage easement that you show there, that's now landlocked with your new application. So my question remains the same: How's the town get in there tomorrow to pump that out? Okay. Uh, what I have offered here is uh, an additional proposal uh, for the commission. Could you just mark that exhibit A? And what we're doing is we're proposing a 20 foot drainage easement along the south side of lot 6 and 7 and then a 20 foot temporary construction oh, easement. Uh, bear in mind the other easement is here. So now the town would have the ability to tie into a drainage easement along the south side of the property. Um, that sketch also indicates at the end of this easement we will provide the town with the right to drain uh, at the end of the proposed easement here as it shows up on that sketch. Uh, we also ran the easement all the way out to Warner Road. Um, there is a catch basin a little south of our property on Warner Road that picks up a low point and discharges pipe 
discharges the water on the neighbor's property here. Uh, with respect to that easement, the town uh, could pick up that uh, drainage from that catch basin, put it a little north, and then down that new easement that we're providing uh, in that sketch. Have you seen this, Andy? No, I have not. I mean, it seems to answer my question. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. and I, I think it just did that to, to follow up with Andy's comments. Yeah, well, like I said, I will, all I was asking for is provisions to be made and, and to kind of plant that seed. So, you know, I, I think this, this certainly goes a ways to address that. It provides a means for us to, to, to install drainage if we needed to to make that connection. So, so we heard them and we addressed it. Uh, there was a simple uh, condition of approval for wetlands, which was a drainage easement for the ponds on Timothy Drive must be provided. So we already, without specificity, we've got a provision that's in there yep. uh, to Andy's satisfaction. Okay, um, and then with respect to other comments um, of Andy's, um, uh, Sewer, um, what we did, and, and this is part of the plans, the sewer line that we have coming along the back of the lots, we extended it to that property line so that uh, the um, property owner here, if he ever had to repair his, his, his system, could tie in directly to that sewer line that we're providing there. Um, and then also, um, with respect to Andy's comment about connecting sewers to Warner Road, um, I want to submit uh, another plan that's essentially going to create an easement of this entire 50-foot uh, strip to show uh, to provide to the town for the extension of sewers out to Warner Road. Um, that ultimately would be done as part of phase two when this is when this is proposed, but it was not included in part of phase one, so I've added that easement as well. More fed. Exhibit B. Um, it merely had A on the prior. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Extra. That's pretty much for my own. Any Good evening. For the record, John Gilmore with the Lone Oak Room, offices at 99 Milky Drive in Shepherd. I want to specifically address two of Andy's comments. One is the location of the sanitary sewer. Uh, I shouldn't say both of Andy's comments. One was the fire chief's office for water. So presently, what we have is sanitary sewer extending from Long to the Drive up in this location along the open space area and then behind the lots that are on the front of lots on Warner Road. Um, this run is about 2,200 feet of sanitary sewer, uh, primarily overland. It doesn't involve any uh, work in the roadways. The reason for this location is here, as Michael said, the property drops off in this direction. So the sanitary sewer line in this location would be a benefit to our site. And that's the reason why we've shown it. There is, however, another sanitary sewer uh, manhole located just to the north off the site. Uh, I think what you were alluding to, Randy, was that we consider installing sewers in one road. Correct. Exactly. Uh, 
ultimately this will be worked out with the WDCA if I'm not mistaken, Andrew. But frankly, this is a shorter run for us, but it doesn't necessarily provide the type of service that we may need at the site in the future. In doing so, we'd have to install the sanitary sewer in Warner Road. Uh, the water main is on the project side of the street, so the sewer would have to be towards the middle or to the far side. Um, honestly, this alternative is a more expensive alternative that serves us. So that has to be explained and hashed out with the WPCA. Right, and then the primary reason I made the comment was more because it needs to be decided at the WPCA, but I wanted that discussion to happen here so that when the decisions made on the WPCA side, you guys are at least aware of the options that were discussed. That's all. So that line you're talking about would be able to service the additional building? It would be able to service whatever happens in here. In the future. Okay. And I think what Mike just submitted to you was an easement where the sewer right. could be extended from the sewer on the site up to the road if needed in the future. If you go south on Warner and then just flag in, you have the easement and access the rest, the balance of the parcel through that easement, does the town not get more um, public benefit? Um, perhaps. I mean, if the sewer were to be extended to here, I think it may make the sewer available to three lots across the street that uh, currently I think are on septic systems. Would make it available, but they'd still have to pay for connecting if they wanted to, correct? Oh, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to sure. make that clear. They have here. to abandon their septic right. tank, pump it out, crush it. Uh, you know, there's protocol. For yeah, the no, I just want to make it so right. everybody knows, understands right. that here. And install a service ladder from the house up into the street. Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, either option, whether you're out in Warner Road or you, you do what they've proposed, either option is going to work. So I'm not concerned about them being able to get the sanitary service. It's just that that's really a WPCA decision. So I want to leave that with the WPCA, but I wanted to make sure that there was some discussion here so that you guys know yeah, what that's going to be. Yeah, I'll try the one or the other. But the second one is more desirable in any event. I don't know. So that's, all, that's all. That was the only yeah. reason for the comment. One other comment I'd like to address has to do with the water. Uh, our chief made a comment about the addition of new buildings that would take water service from the water main. Presently, there is a water main in Warner Road, the entire front of our site. It's a 12-inch water main, which is unusual. Ordinarily, they're eight-inch mains. So that's telling me that 12-inch main is going to be a future transmission main, which means it moves water from the regional water uh, authorities and facilities to other points in your, in your service area. Um, I think the chief was concerned that there's no pressure out there and that lots taking service would further reduce that. I'd like to comment on that and put something into the record. He asked that we have a dialogue with the regional water authority, which we do. Uh, presently, the 12 inch main has a pressure of 61 PSI in the street at elevation 207, which is the high point in front of our site. That's pretty good. I mean, that's the optimum of what they'd like to have in their service area, that is the regional water authority. The difficulty comes in is that water main, while it's going to be a transmission main in the future, is a dead end. It stops short of the North Brantford town line. Eventually, the water company is going to loop that water main in to make it a transmission main. So at the present time, if the fire department were to hook up to any of the hydrants that are already fronting the property, water would be drawn only from one direction, not from two as they usually have. So they're, and the way they do it, frankly, is they, they show up with a pumper truck, they connect the hydrant to the pumper truck, and they take hose lines off of that. So the pumper truck is actually regulating the pressure in the main. And they draw it down from 60 PSI to 20 PSI. And I venture to say, even though it's a dead end main, they can probably get over a thousand gallons a minute out of that uh, out of that main, drawing it down to 20 PSI. They don't draw it any lower than 20 PSI. They don't want to begin sucking water into the water main from groundwater sources. And that's how they operate. 
So eventually that name will be uh, connected through. It'll be at the discretion of the regional water authorities to when, and when they do that. So I'd just like to give you a piece of correspondence. It's frankly emails because we got the comments on Friday and they responded uh, this morning. Exhibit C. Have you seen this, Andy? No. Okay. I think that's the only one of these. Our presentation. Right? Don't you have any further? You know, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Or information. Okay. Thank you very much, Joey. <coughs> I just have a question. I'm sorry. Um, I, I had a, a comment, um, and somewhat it's for the commission, um, was just regarding section 2.5.1.3, the objectives to qualify for a cluster subdivision special permit. There are five, you know, different conditions there. It just involved, you know, the reason for having a cluster subdivision, preservation of open space, uh, public benefit, et cetera. Um, it says that the, the commission may approve a cluster subdivision if they feel it's meeting one or more of the objectives. So as long as the commission's comfortable with that, they don't need any further uh, pontification by um, the, the applicant, um, you know, then that's fine, we can proceed. Let me, let me just say, I don't really, that, the letter from the water, and I, we all just saw it now, seems to say that there should be some sort of flow test done or something, doesn't it? That's what it says. And, and let, me, let me just short circuit because I don't profess to have, understand this, but when, when the fire chief tells us consider consulting with the water authority to ensure adequate water pressure for all domestic and fire protection needs are met, I'd like for me to have something back from him that the fire chief saw this and this is good enough. Because he, he's expressing a concern about fire protection needs. Uh, absolutely, right? and that's paramount, you know, for us as well. And as I say, uh, we only got the comment on Friday. I understand, right. and therefore, this is the, uh, the best we can come up with in a short order. The fact of the matter is, when I look at the data, and I previously was the engineer for the regional water board, so I understand water systems pretty well. This is a pretty good system, albeit a dead end. Uh, a flow test would be in order. I think it would behoove us to have that done at some point. Um, there's a fee associated with which, which, you know, it could be the town that pays for it if he's interested for that is a chief, or perhaps that could be something we do as part of a, a special condition or a condition of approval. The fact of the matter is, at the present time, it's a pretty good system. It would be a much stronger system once they do the way. And I hear what you're saying, and, and I, I don't doubt that what you're saying is correct, that it's a pretty good system, but there's no way for me to assess that. Certainly. And there's no way for me to say that the fire chief right. finds this acceptable. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to address. I'm, I'm very hesitant to approve something with a fire chief telling us we may have a problem that is not yet resolved. So I just don't know how to deal with that. That's my issue. Excuse me, Jim. Andy, <clears throat> can you fill us in on this and the water pressure there? Or what do you feel about this? Well, I mean, what, what the water authority is saying is, is uh, we, we got to take as, uh, as correct. So, uh, and they're suggesting that, it, that, a, that a test be done. Just <coughs> right. to see how the system behaves when it's, when it's put under a load. That's mm -hmm. really what it comes okay. down to. Okay, good enough. So yep. I would think yes. what I'm hearing then is that we should do that before we say this is okay or do, can we do it as a condition of approval? I'm not trying to cause them a problem, mm -hmm. but I'm also yeah. loath to ignore what the fire chief is saying Absolutely. to us. Absolutely. So it would seem to me, and I tend to doubt that we're going to want to do the test ourselves. <laughs> uh -uh. My guess is your guys are asking for the subdivision, so you would do the test. I have no idea how much I'm, these things cost. Um, but I think we need to see that there's going to be sufficient water pressure because we don't want people coming back to see us in two years to say, you guys approved this, and now I, my shower is garbage. You know, that's kind of, and or trust me, my house burned down. Right. Well, my yeah. house burned down well, even well, worse. Right. So I, I just wanted to raise that to you, and yeah. we can it talk about it. It certainly makes sense. And yeah. As I say, I wish we had the comment a little earlier. Right. Yeah. Understood. Well, and then nice. you could have gone back and seen Frankly, it. Frankly, I'm surprised that the regional water authority doesn't have its own data that they had. Yeah, right. Like, because they do them randomly throughout the system. 
but in this particular case, it, you know, it's a relatively new maintenance as the work companies facilities go, and it probably have adjusted. So yeah, all right. I'll say this: the, the fire chief had some particular specific information, you know, in the area. So I, we're kind of putting the cart before the horse here, but it would be possible to. I guess have a condition of approval said they achieve pressure. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. It's like yeah, fair it, enough, because fair enough. you know yeah. because the the chief and all the other ones says there are no concerns. Because I'd much rather see that out of our fire chief than I have these concerns. Oh, we're going to address them later, but we can all talk about it. I don't, you know, be interesting to say. I'm not precluding anything. We can discuss how we want to handle it. Sean, what's it? It's, your your exhibit C indicates that uh, you can schedule uh, flow test. Um, what's a rough time frame on getting a flow test done? I'm gonna guess, Alan, just to get it into their system, it's gonna probably take three, four weeks. That's that's been my experience in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Jim, I just I'm good. The, the idea, I I think they've met the requirements for cluster subdivision the things that we yeah, need. Yeah, no, no, I like the cluster idea. I like the design, and I'm glad we got the easements uh, for the town in there. So I'm okay right now with what we have. Ron. Yeah, my concerns about water pressure are the same, but I'd like to ask if it would be appropriate when we see the results of the test and the calculations, I'd feel more comfortable that it was based upon future development of the site if there's going to be another 20 or 30 homes in there i don't want the water authority to say we've got enough water for eight houses i want to be back in that position in the near future when they come for phase two so. yeah that's just planning well i see the plans maybe what they have for like you said if it's a transmission line when we know they're going to open yeah, it up yeah, and I, not be a dead end i try to get more information about the capital improvement plan okay. for extending that Honestly, they, they kind of, it's like, the, it's like the flow test. They don't have the data, so they burden a developer or somebody else who needs it. It's the same thing with the water main extensions. They feel their system is adequate to provide both domestic and fire. In fact, they don't even look at domestic service. It's always the fire demand that's the right. significant service. The domestic usage on the line is minimal compared to its capacity, particularly a 12 inch. But what they look to do is, as other properties develop further, they look for the developers to pay for the water main extension and then they'll charge them for an eight and put a 12 in there once that's typically how it is. We have a little experience yeah. with water main extension. Yes, yeah. we do. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've been down the road. Jump. No, my, my main concern was over what the fire chief had said. I think yeah. we cashed that out. So. Okay. <clears throat> you okay? You okay yeah, yeah, right now I'm okay. okay. Oh, I do have one more question. Um, and this has come up before on similar sites. Um, has the property been tested? Will it be tested for pesticides before it's turned over for residential development? I ask this because I've done developments on previous agricultural sites that had to be legally remediated before it was safe for residential use. I know they've done a phase one uh, study of the property. Um, so I have not uh, have the results, and I don't believe it was required for them to go forward. Okay, thank you very much. Could you please supply that information to the town engineering staff so they can make an opinion on Certainly. that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a good catch. Okay, Joe, you get Okay, we'll just open up this to the public and, and see what they have to say. <clears throat> All, all here in favor of this application. Uh, raise your hand or step forward. Or step up to the mic, sir. No, as you say, ask him and speak in favor. I'm sorry? He meant if anyone wants to speak in favor of the application. He oh. just said in favor. Okay. <laughs> all right. Is, is, questions regarding it, correct? 
Yes, yeah. we're going to give you plenty of time for that. Okay. Anyone else would like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone here like to speak in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Any questions? Yeah, opposition? Yeah. Step right. ahead. Questions. Well, opposition questions. and questions are the same. Come on up. Come on. <laughs> you should just state your name and, and address for the record. Frank Marr. Uh, and on the side from the discussion here, in the spring there was a fire on Warner Road, and at that point the fire chief was concerned about the water pressure putting up the fire. It was a barn fire. Just a note. My question is to the extent that this goes into North Branford eventually, one group of folks have any control over that. And if that happens, and they want to still use the water from Warner Road and the sewer from Warner Road and dump the traffic in Warner Road, is that any kind of issue? Okay, you take your notes. No, don't take them now. Just take notes and respond to it later, okay? Okay, very good. Hey, speak up, miss. Barbara Kovacs, 80 Warner Road. So I have actually two questions, not sure if I can ask them both. Um, my first question is that 50 foot easement or uh, right of way, can that be moved to Deer Run? Because if that is going to eventually be a street, it's the traffic will be heading in front of a home. So the headlights are going to be coming right into someone's home. And if it was pushed down to Deer Run, at least it's a street paralleling or, or perpendicular to the street. That's my first question. And um, my second question is, my home sits below the street line. If the sewer system is running toward on Warner Road so that we can hook in, would I be able to hook in because it does go below the street line? Mm. So. Question? OK. okay. Have to do Thank you very much. Have to do mm. Sure. Thomas Borelli, 69 Warner Road. So, I have a couple of various questions. One, there was a discussion about capping this line down here and regrading the water. By regrading it now, you're adding more water into this wetlands along my property line. At the previous meeting, I asked and discussed the possibility of when they're doing this, maybe making drainage of some sort to this pond so it doesn't accumulate or over. When they regrade this, it's all going to pour right over there. They're so adding more to it now. Tom, Tom, point out where your lot is. Um, You're um, up there, right? This is my house here, and these two building lots here as well. Okay. Our, our family lots. Um, and the pond is down. The pond is here on their, on their property as well. Okay. Um, this used to drain on, on their property, and it was maintained by, um, by, the, by the farm, and it was a uh, ditch just dug to keep it draining, and obviously that hasn't been maintained in quite a few years now. So that's why I figured now's the time to discuss it. Um, the other one is, is the sewers. And I, again, I don't know if those are going to be public meetings the uh wpc air or not yes so. but this storm drain here on my property is 12 feet down roughly and if you went down one road it's going to stick out the middle of one road you can't go down one road that's my i mean i'm not a <coughs> surveyor but that's my assumption of it that road goes one road has quite a dip going down after the hill so that's why this right away was given to them to go around so i just don't know why we can't discuss them putting the sewer and just going to the front of the house and down and serving the people there like while they're there i mean i don't know why they have to go behind all their houses it's not that much more cost the previous development on one view they put the sewer on their property so they didn't have to invade the road so they will do the same thing and put stuff out for the property again it's i guess it's pwpca but i just want to put my thoughts on that um the other one is the uh a1 survey for environmental stuff 
Um, they have phase one. Phase mm -hmm. one. Yeah. There are, that I know of, at least two more, one oil tank, one gasoline tank still on that property, at least. Um, and I know there's, these, these things are done, and the way they're done is so they pass, right? Uh, everybody, you know, I mean, over here in this area, right on the edge of this open space was where the chemicals were mixed every day. And over here is where they used to fuel the trucks. Those tanks have been removed, and I assume that soil has been tested from the survey because the tanks were removed at that time. So my concern is in the barn, there's one underneath the building that was on fire in the building and one next to the building. One was gasoline and one was fuel. Just, you know, so I don't know if going to that next phase is better for everybody. Uh, that I don't know. It may be. What's that? I say it may be. Because basically some of us are still on webs. You know, so we do, that is a concern. Um, Those are mine. Okay, thank you, thank you Tom. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? <coughs> Anyone? Take it. <coughs> Step ahead, sir. Michael Cavalier, 9 Timothy Drive. Uh, I'm sorry. Mike, Michael Cavalier, 9 Timothy Drive. I hear the concerns of water pressure coming from your people, and two and a half years ago, we had the water company come down Timothy Drive. They went to the end of the cul-de-sac. Few people had to hook up. As far as water pressure and not having enough water come through your shower, the water company does not have enough pressure there to get to the second floor of the raised ranches with cold water. You have to put a pump in the street in order to get that to happen. Okay. Just wanted to let you know that. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that there's provisions being made. The water coming from that drainage system off the farm into the wetland. Once the wetland fills up, then the Timothy Drive pond fills, the retention pond fills. And it fills, it comes right through the berm. And the last time it was pumped out, it had to be pumped out for seven days by the North Haven Fire Department. They were the only people that could get in there at that time without having the Pirellis there with their tractors. Mm -hmm. The last time the town was there with two and three of their big machines, they had to go get help to get towed out of there. They're not the proper machines to get down in there and, and be able to get out. They needed four-wheel drive. They just didn't have the right tires or their vehicles were too small. That's all. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak? Any any comments? Any questions? Can I ask one more? One more, certainly. That's why you said I had a notepad. Tom Borelli again on Warner Road. So, um, one, I'm, I'm in favor of this. So, I mean, I, I like the idea. I like the open space. So, I don't want to make it sound like I'm against it. But I just want to make sure everything's... My concern is, is the hill here. On the one side, long view, the road was widened. This is a newer road, and it's widened. It's a bottleneck that goes in really tight. The sight line is horrible. And I just don't know when that stuff ever gets addressed, if ever. Um, you know, if you start adding in all these cars down the road, going down Warner Road, and adding that traffic, that's just a bad spot. I don't know if anyone's driven up and down that hill or not. But it's, a, it's a, my driveway is on that hill. so. Cars, cars come flying over that hill every day. So that's my concern, this is not a great sight line there. And I don't know if that would be ever addressed. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else have any questions, any comments, anything? Okay. You want to, uh, you want to respond to these? Uh, either one of you? Somebody. Somebody did. <laughs> discussion about the uh, water pressure on here. I can only go by what the Regional Water Authority tells us. Sure. 61 PSI, pretty good, at least in front of the site. Mm -hmm. Domestic consumption on the water main affects pressure almost insignificantly. It's all about fire. So I think getting the fire flow test uh, done out there is a good thing. Um, you know, 
a residential home on a half acre lot, three quarter acre lot, probably has a fire flow demand of about 500 gallons to maybe 750 gallons per minute. That's typically what the insurance services office who rates communities use. I'm fairly confident that the water company can deliver that kind of pressure, uh, uh, deliver that kind of volume based upon the pressure they have out there. But I think it's another that we do the test. Um, I think with respect to the sanitary sewer, um, again, I, I think there's merit to put the sewer here. Maybe there's alterations that could be made to accommodate a future extension in one mode. Whether it's up Warner Road, or whether it's through here and up the easement, or, or providing a, at least a right of way, which we're doing, uh, to the sewer. But I think this is the alignment, and as I say, this is not the cheapest of the sanitary sewers. That's the reason why we're not we're not doing it because of economics. We're doing it because of the potential future development. As was said before, it, the grades drop off in this direction. This is this is where the water would flow based upon the contours, and that's the purpose for doing contours, is so you can see the, the patterns and the relative elevations of site. So looking at this thing, this is the direction the water's going to flow. This is not the way the water's going to flow. Some portion of the site does do that, but this portion of the site is going to flow this way. So I just want to point that out to you as well. Uh, Mike, do you have any other uh, comments? Um, just that. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, just that um, we will uh, follow up and get uh, copies of environmental reports to staff. Um, we'll follow up with the flow uh, test with the water company and uh, we will to ask for a continuation until the next one. Okay. And you're willing to grant the commission an extension to act? Yes. Yeah. Yes, like gonna, for sure. I'm going to, I'm going to talk on the record. That's all. Okay, thank you. Okay, I just want to say Barbara had a question. Explain the easement will never turn into a road. So you didn't answer her question about an easement turning into a road. She was worried about that. So I can tell you it won't turn into a road, okay? Um, and the question about hooking up to a sewer, I imagine that would require a pump. Her question is that her house is low if the sewer is here. It depends how deep the sewer is. Yeah, obviously. that's yeah. Right. We couldn't answer that for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, without study of exactly where her house are, right. and where the, the floor elevations are and everything, you really can't answer uh, that question. Uh, we are providing an easement here for connectivity to, to Warner Road. Um, and, you know, if the water or the sewer was extended in the water road, water road, and it's a public street, so there would not be an easement there at that point. Oh, wait, let me, let me understand something because maybe I misunderstood what you're saying. The 50 foot easement that you, you have there between the second house and the third house down, yes. right? Will that become a driveway or roadway into the back lots ultimately? Our intent, as we develop other phases, yep. would have that become a public service. So, what she was asking was why does it have to be there? Because whoever's going to come out there, the headlights will go right into the house across the street, as opposed to somewhere further down where you'd be adjacent to some other crossroad. That's yeah. what she was asking. Oh, I thought you said exactly. about the drainage easement. Okay. She's Got talking it. about moving the Got easement it. down. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, first of all, with respect to lights, uh, the house across the street um, is substantially higher than the road. I would say the floor level at the door of the house uh, is probably six to eight feet higher than the road. Um, so, in my opinion, it would be minimal impact of direct headlights going into those windows. Um, secondly, from a, a planning perspective, and John can jump in on this if he wants, um, planners can try to stay away from four-way intersections, number one. Really? Some towns have regulations that uh, minimize the distance between 
intersections where they feel a key intersection is safer than a four-way intersection. But also from a, a, a site perspective, if we were to bring um, the roadway over here, right. opposite their run, um, you've got, you're then kind of minimizing yourself as far as coming in to this site with respect to the length of the dead end street, or you're building a road all along this parking line to a future extension of Timothy Drive. Uh, economically, it's not feasible because you're probably only going to get houses on one side of the road if you were to come straight through here to a Timothy Drive, Timothy Drive extension and then a future um, dead end street coming down into this end. If, if just from a planning point of view and creating a uh, a road circulation that flows through the property, so the bottom line to it is that's the best place for you to do it with the planning of your sure. subdivision. Yeah, sure. That's, what it, that's what it comes to. Yeah. to. If you look at it, Jim, the, the, I understand but, uh, your question. Yeah. Let me ask you, well, well, they're limited to what they can get for that anyway, but let me ask you, Andy, because I had never heard that before. I sort of subscribe more to what she's saying. Is the T a better deal than a straight across road? doesn't matter. I don't think we can do it anyway, and I think what they're proposing is reasonable, but I understand what you're asking, but I, I'd never heard that before. Yeah, it's, I mean, you're talking about fairly low-volume roads. Correct. I don't think it's I don't think it's a huge issue one way or another, to be honest. Right. Okay. 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 No. okay. Thank Mike. you. You all set? Yeah. Teresa? No, I'm all set right now. Yeah. Well, let me just that. Joe? The, uh, Mike? Mike? Would you like to continue this into yes. next month? Yes. You want to ask for continuation? You know, it's unlikely. Right. Uh, I'm sorry? I did that. I did that. Oh, okay, I missed that. Yeah, so. I'm good. You good? I'm good with continuing. Do we need to move, move to okay. continue it or yeah. just? Yeah. 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 During deliberation, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe we can. So okay. it's going to be continued, folks, so you don't It'll have to have it. I'm back to listen to what they say. Okay. Good enough. And they'll address all these things hopefully for the next month we'll talk about. It. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll give you a few minutes, folks, there, uh, just to clear the room before we move on. I'm not on Facebook, so I don't know this. You got one trying to point them off on me? I know. Get another blanket. Hold it down. Venmo? Venmo? No. Oh, get with the thousand. Maybe I am old. <laughs> All right. So Just it's your October nineteenth. Okay. Okay. Folks, folks. Where is it? You gotta take it outside. We got some oh, more okay. business to do, please. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, got it. All right, thank you. So that's what we saw. Huh? Yeah, yeah, no, I know that. Okay, Louie, you want to come back up? Okay, good enough. All right, folks, we're going to move on. Teresa? Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, uh, for number P19 32, resubdivision right. application of Updike Kelly Spilacy PC applicant Connecticut Investment Development LLC owner for two lots relative to 100 Powdered Metals Drive map 29 lot 112 plan entitled resubdivision plan portion of section 3 Grasso Associates et al subdivision property of Connecticut Investment Development LLC 100 Powdered Metal Drive North Haven Connecticut Prepared by Larero Engineering Associates, Inc., dated June 19, 2019, scale 1 inch equals 30 feet, IG 80 zoning district. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. We're good. Okay, folks. Go ahead. Good uh, My name is Robert Pepet, and I'm an attorney from Upside Kelly and Spellacy. Excuse me, spell your last name, please. T as in Peter, E P H I C K. Um, I represent Connecticut Investment Development, LLC. 
I should add that I'm accompanied tonight by uh, fellow counsel John Akinola, along with Mr. Clint Brown um, from Loreto Engineering. Um, so we had recently submitted a re-subdivision application um, with no proposed construction at the time. Um, the parcel or the site is a six-acre parcel, and the plan is to divide it into two separate lots. One which will be 3.7 acres, the other which will be 2.3 acres. The 3.7 acre lot has an existing building on it, which is used for um, warehouse storage and uh, associated office use. Um, we are also requesting today a waiver of the sidewalk requirements. In December of 2018, this same parcel was uh, brought for a site plan application and the sidewalk requirement was waived. Um, it is an area primarily used for industrial usage. Um, there's not any pedestrian activity, so for similar reasons, we would again request that sidewalk waiver. Um, along those same lines, the uh, zoning board has a recommended condition for street trees at 50 foot intervals for parcel B, which is the 2.3 acre. Um, similarly, we are requesting um, a waiver of this recommendation um, since well, this is largely an industrial area. Um, there is no really pedestrian usage and there's also no trees at the site. Um, so at this time, um, I would like to just ask Mr. Clint Brown to come and he can get into the more technical terms of our application. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Clint Brown with Lorero Engineers. Um, we're the uh, civil engineers and surveyors for this project. Uh, as Rob indicated, it's a proposal to divide a six acre parcel into two, two parcels. Uh, the history goes back uh, quite some ways. These, some of these lots were created in the, in the 60s, which is why you see that name on the front, the Grasso name. It goes back to the original lots. Uh, and it, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, as you may recall, we were in about a uh, a year ago for the site plan uh, for the existing building, which you were kind enough to approve. And uh, on the basis of that, the applicant went ahead and, and renovated the building. And now he's ready to uh, create an additional building lot, basically by dividing the uh, lot right along this line here. The thing towards me is vacant um, and uh, would be available for industrial development. It's an industrial zone parcel. and. Uh, it uh, conforms to all of the industrial zoning regulations um, and uh, we believe that it would be uh, appropriate to, uh, to uh, ultimately build on it, which would be the applicant's next step and that it gets uh, new stuff to come back in with a site plan uh, uh, for, your, for your review. Um, uh, looking through the comments, uh, I, I see from um, the town engineer that interested in the comment on the uh, sanitary sewer service. Um, the existing sewer line uh, ends right here at the driveway. Uh, the existing building is connected to the sewer. At that point, uh, um, Potted Metal Drive begins to slope downhill and the elevation of the buildable portion of this lot is at the same elevation as the invert of the sewer in the street. So if the sewer were extended, it would have to be a force made in a pump station. So uh, what we've uh, made provision for in this plan is an easement in favor of the new lot across the existing lot to allow for a force main to be hooked into the sewer at its present terminus. Uh, so that way we don't have to get into a situation where we're looking at a force main in a pump station for that for maybe two lots at the end of the street. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a building down here at the end of Carter Medical Drive, and that um, building is served by a on-site city disposal system. So that's the way it was approved. Um, other than that, I don't think there are any substantive comments uh, that I'm aware of. If there's anything we can um, answer, we'd be happy to, uh, happy to do so. All right, thank you. You're all set with that, Dan, you're all set? Yeah. Okay. Well, the only question I have is, who said, is it the zoning regs that call for trees there, or did it sounded like you said somebody requested or required those? It's a subdivision, so uh -huh. therefore we had the ability to get the street trees in court with subdivision gotcha. regulation. Okay, so it's a regulation. Okay, thank you. Better? Yep. 
Joe? I don't have any questions. Teresa? Um, my question was going to be about the trees, but I think Jim is going to take that. So well, He's got his finger over there. Well, because I'm just trying to understand. I, I get the sidewalk waiver as much as it kills me. I get the sidewalk waiver. Um, with, with the A, parcel A, are there trees every 50 feet? There's none. There's none so, the whole tree. Excuse me, I'm sorry. No. There aren't any yet because it wasn't split. It was just a site plan. Now they're attempting to split it. So and you would have the ability so what's to get there, three trees. What's shown on sheet one of three, where those are trees there, those are what are being proposed that you don't want to do. Is that essentially right? Sheet three. Sheet three. Sheet three. Sheet three. And what's shown there is the every 50 feet, Alan? Is that what I'm looking at? Because I'm not understanding. Um, let me just take a look. Yeah, it's page three. Take a look. Top left. No, uh, I think they were a little wider than what. Well, they, the new lot doesn't yeah. have any alongside Powder Metal Drive, right? What's well, shown on this map, anyway. Here, yeah. Or just yes, just no. add, tell me whether I'm reading it right. I've never New been one. very good at this. Yeah. Okay. The, there, there is not a new subdivided lot here, correct? Except on the next to the parking spaces. Okay. As I look at the proposed trees for the already built lot. Right. Um, I think they just need to be tightened up in in one spot or maybe two spots. But the trees are there, no big deal. Right. There are no trees shown for the okay. roughly 98 feet right. of the other lot. Got it. So that's what we have to talk about. Other than that, it seems yeah. to be nothing here to be. This is fine. So it's 98 feet? That 98 lot? feet? It's not 290? I, I didn't look. No, sir, it. it's not. No, um, that dashed line or that broken line with a double dash on it. That represents the end of the accepted road, powder metal drive. Oh, right. So yeah. the road does not continue and it does not hook oh. to the south. So in terms of it being a town road, um, it's only a town road up to that dashed line. So that, that was one question I forgot. So what happens there? Do, do, does it, the road get built further down or? No, and what they're, I guess what they're offering, they're just trying to split on a road that just ends at a point. They have enough frontage, right. 50 feet of frontage, so and they have enough lot width. Come in so, that way. Yeah. All right. It would be great to tag them with the another lot in that road, uh, in road but it uh, be great to get them to do the road all the way down and to the right uh, on their dime, but. Uh, that's yeah. why they have lawyers and uh, well, they object to that. I don't see that. any way that we but, could but for some it, reason. So, yeah. so let me be clear then, if we have the 50 foot regulation, 98 feet would maybe we could squeeze in two trees just to but, clarify yes. that's what we're saying. Okay, that's yeah. all I wanted to know. Okay. okay. The issue is that's really the industrial road. This is the access to the town property in the rear, which has become the leaf. And so they will probably become probably the transfer facility. Uh, there is nothing on either side of this road from uh, what's the main intersection? From Grasso. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is all industrial. Uh, the manufacturers here, and we have a couple of other industrial sites. There was a, a blight situation here for years where all the trucks finally the town they got yeah. cleared up. Oh, yeah. I mean, this doesn't this doesn't serve anything because there's no tree belt. It just doesn't play out. But uh, mm -hmm. this would be a big improvement to the area. This, this building. Uh, the golf literally did a tremendous job to bring it back. And do this on the the okay. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, yeah. Got it. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. This is a uh, public. This hearing. is a public hearing. The board is it all set. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, is there anyone here that'd like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone in favor? Anyone in opposition? Like to speak in opposition? Any questions? 
Are we done? Yeah. Good. Yep. Is that just public hearing is closed? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, we'll just move forward. Uh, I guess Bernie is not here, or is he? He's well, in the hall. He was in the sure hallway. Oh, he was? Yeah. There, I can Okay, uh, site plan uh, P19-28. Let the record show, Pam, that we're taking five and six. There's also a cam with this. I'll get back and see. I had all this stuff sitting at my house. Who's asking why? That's the one we just did. P19-28. You said 32. Oh, we did? Okay. I will look at the show. What? Okay. Pam, let the record show that... Joe, this guy has a comment about the last application. He didn't ask. He didn't ask for. He asked for a comment. I can record show the gentleman uh, had some concerns about that last application. He didn't realize uh, um, that that was the opportunity to do that. I don't know. We uh, did say it three or four times. I can't. As much. I'm sorry. I, it's closed. I mean, if there's something that we could help you with, you know, after the meeting is over, yeah. we could certainly certainly talk with you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm sorry. Okay, Bernie. For the record, Bernard. One second. Just let the record show that that uh, Lou uh, really is sitting in for Joe. Okay. Who's just sitting out, sitting in your room. Okay. Thank you. Okay, bring hang on a second. Jim, you want to go? Well, let me let me start. Yeah, the first.
comment that and we've been at this for a long time now and like the number three says review the site revealed inoperable trucks trailers other equipment these items need to be removed. we've been talking about this forever and every time i drive in the back of this thing everything is the same so it doesn't look to be like the things have been moved there's trees growing through payloaders it's just a mess back there and it says these things any approval granted should be contingent on this and i'm concerned it'll never get done because it hasn't been done literally now for a couple of years so well, why would i believe if we made a contingent on an approval that a little bit happened because it hasn't happened well i i, I think um, much a lot of the material when we started is gone so there has been progress. Mr. Sarasi has certain equipment uh, in the rear of the site that has not been removed because it's not inoperable trucks. There's, there's several inoperable trucks on that site and been there a long time. Yeah. And it, I, I hear what you're telling me that it's not your tenant, it's really the owner's property, but. There's nothing we can do about that. I don't know how to do it. I mean, the, you, you come here, I don't know how, I don't, for me, I don't know how we can grant it with this continuing problem because I don't see how the problem's going to get solved. I'm not sure either. Okay, fair and, enough. And I don't have, we don't have control over some of that. I get that. There is some equipment in the back of the property that is under Mr. Sarasi's control. That property or that equipment will come into the building and be installed as permanent equipment to be used in his business. Um, so we do have control over that. Uh, and that will come in, but it's a significant undertaking at you know, significant cost to bring it in and install it. Once it's installed, if we don't get a site plan approval that would include our use, then it's all going to come out. Because if we don't get that, we lose we collectively as a town are going to lose that major tenant on that site. So my only response to the concern, and it's not an illegitimate concern, I'll give it to you, is we have a site that's in disrepair and contaminated. We have really one major active tenant who is taking responsibility, at least in part, for trying to improve it ultimately. If we collectively kind of fail in getting those approvals, this tenant's gone, and that site's going to be in further disrepair. So mm -hmm. I guess this application is trying to kind of weigh the, the balancing act. We've got a tenant who has and is willing to continue to do some things to improve and think there is a benefit of, a, of keeping an industrial user in this town. They don't come down the road every day. Um, so well, it's, it's a little bit of a balance. What's going on with the owner? Any, any, anything from the owners? Because we did, get, we did get some, we did make some progress with the owners. Right. If you look on the site plan, the it, um, along Sacka Point Road on the east side, which screens some of the other tenants' trucks, the Sun Road, Sun, Sun yeah. Runner, and vehicular storage. Um, he's agreed to do that work, to pay for that work. So we Sun Runner has. No, no. Oh, oh, the Yale Metler. Okay, all right. So. Um, we did make some progress there. Some of the other tree plantings that are shown on that side of the parking area would be paid for by the owner and is installed by us, but paid for by the owner. Okay, so the big question is you saw the comment about the fire hydrants? Yeah, that one, that one, I'm not sure I have an answer for it yet completely, but I saw the uh, comment. Um, so I, I, I don't have an answer. My engineer didn't have an answer on that. You've got to look at it. There are two or three. Uh, there's two hydrants in front of the site. Right. There's three on the building, which I'm not sure he saw, so we may have to bring him back out there, that could that service 
the fire truck. So there's three hydrants on the building? There's three, um, or three water three service. Three stations. Okay. They're on the front of the building, more on the western side, but on site. And there's two hydrants that are on the street. That comment, I did not, that was a new comment, one I did not see until mm. Friday. My engineer didn't really have uh, an answer on that question. So that one, um, we may still have to try to figure out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we just started. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, a couple of things. The hydrant issue, I understand it's a new thing. It was new to, to us also. Mm -hmm. But whenever the fire marshal has a concern, it rises pretty high on our radar. So. We talked about that today and trying to make it get together yeah. with the fire marshal and see if we could do a second visit to try to figure out. If we're all on the same page about what's there and to try to determine if there's other former locations that could be utilized. Right. Taken out of service or Just to let my comments, which somewhat mirror Jim's, I've been pretty, first of all, we've been, I think, working as hard as we can with the tenant. I realize you've got a difficult landlord Wish we could do something about that, but we can't. But uh, we've been bending over backwards to try to help for a long time. During that time, I don't believe I've ever been ambiguous about my interest in cleaning up everything behind me. Now, you just said that equipment, that stuff getting ready to move into the building, I'd be happy to go back there and look. But when I have gone back, which I do about once a year, it looks mostly like junk to me, and nothing's been moved out of there. And like Jim, my concern is that even if we granted an approval with a condition, it wouldn't get moved out. And in addition to that, someone, I don't know who, cut down a whole lot of vegetation back there. I don't know what for. It suspiciously looked like for more storage. But so that makes me, frankly, kind of nervous why somebody would would do that. I think so, that's the question. Okay. Hey, sure. The, the, I don't know if you correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a lot of junk in that area which has been cleaned out and the vegetation, if you want to call it that, was also eaten invasive. So that was cleared out and as part of the new plan, we have a new planting plan for yeah. that area that's will be installed. Yeah. So I think that's an improvement that cleared out a lot of junk that had been there um, and would be improved with a new planting um, scheme that would be compatible with the proximity to the tunnel areas that are offset. Okay. When we're on the landscaping issue, and I would defer to the town engineer, and I'm not a landscape architect, but I, the, the drawing looks nice, and I counted up. 57 new plantings, but on your plant list, you've only got 39. Mm -hmm. So either I'm counting wrong or there's a break. The drawing doesn't match the schedule. So that's something that needs to be resolved to the town engineer's satisfaction. Okay. But I'll say it again for the record. I will be reluctant to vote on this in any positive manner until and unless there is nothing behind the building. And if that's not clear, I don't know how else to say it. But um, it's, to me, it looks like all junk back there. If it's not junk, then move it somewhere else. But in behind the building, when you look at the floodplain elevations, that's all below the floodplain back there. In my opinion, and I would defer to the town engineer, that is not suitable under any conditions for storage of anything. It's below the flood level. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Just my opinion. I'm not speaking for the rest of the commission. So. Thank you. 
Yes. Okay. Hello. No question. No question. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what we do. Uh, we, we have to have something from the fire chief. You know that because we yeah. can't do anything. Here's my suggestion because you can't meet with us out there because we're making a decision. But maybe staff can meet you because maybe we're being harsh. I don't. I don't think so. I'm kind of with Ron. I've been back there, and you're telling me there's some equipment going inside. The stuff that I'm saying is definitely not going inside. <laughs> there's a payloader, and grass is growing through it. You know, and it's been there like forever. That's just one thing. But there's a ton of stuff there. But I don't want to be unfair to your client because I know you got a problem with the landlord. But you got it. It's to me. It looks. I. I was back there Saturday. So, and I go back there pretty regularly just to see if anything changed. And to me, when I've gone back there, it doesn't look to me like it's changed. Um, and I think that's, I, Alan, you and I talked about this. I don't, you we go did. back there. You haven't seen any changes in there that are significant? Well, I, I, I think there have been a few changes since we started, but still. Yeah, um, there's a I, lot of stuff. I, I think the area that's designated for Sunrunner in, in particular um, has been reorganized. And, I, and probably quite a few things are removed. Again, I don't see how that is necessarily your client's responsibility per se, but when I look at that area, I, I, I get concerned that the site plan just designates Sunrunner storage, and then that's sort of a, a, an approval by the commission's part to allow uh, trucks that are absolutely never going to hit the road again a couple of trailers that i think they just have trouble disposing of there's a lot of things that are that are there big things that are, are junk and and that really need to be removed not organized better when i look in bruno's area my concern is just that he has requested outdoor storage in many different locations um, in a sort of courtyard between the buildings uh, adjacent on the eastern side to the front portion that, that he's, he's now taking, um, beyond to the north of his um, outdoor storage requested in the very rear of the building. So there's a lot of different areas that are there, but there's even more stuff. Um, now we've got a car that's up on jack stands that's there. I don't know, maybe, you know, I'm not a car guy, I'm not an automotive re repair guy, maybe that can hit the road someday, I, I have no idea. But right now, we're not doing automotive repair. Why is that car there? Why is it up on jack stands? And the whole thing leads to sort of a culture of, of items on the property that are junk and that are treated with disregard. So. I think that's the issue. Would the stuff ever be cleaned up? I, I can certainly respect, you know, as Ron says, you know, there's certain things that are back there that maybe have um, some potential to be moved inside or used inside. But we're getting into a problem where there are a lot of things that, uh, yeah, I don't know, we, we could meet out there and take a look more specifically with what <coughs> might enter the building at some point. Um, we, we could take a look. Uh, you know, at some of those other items collectively, even the Sunrunner items. Okay. Well, I think well, that would go far, wait, Fern, for me, if, if staff went out there and then we could look at staff comments burning. coming back in, including Sunrunner stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. You yeah. know. Good enough. So if you want to, uh, uh, I, I believe we are exactly 64 days from your date of receipt, but if you wouldn't mind just putting on the record granting an extension uh, or not to hold it well, over well Bernie, would it help you <laughs> fair enough fair enough hold uh, on uh, hold up there we're willing to meet with staff talk you know the fire marshal included maybe can come on that visit with us that'd be great well, i yeah. want staff to go out and meet you but i mean you think it's going to help you to you know yeah. to, to do something so when you come back next right. month well, well I, I, I tell you i'd feel better if they went out there with you and i had some sense that something positive is going yeah. to happen and that's kind of where i'm coming from i get the restrictions but it seems to me just so you know like ron said i'd like to see the back of the place cleaned up and it's not so tell us what's coming inside what's not coming yeah. inside and, and explain it and the fire chief goes without saying you gotta you gotta yeah. make the fire chief happy just like we told the other applicant 
So I'll, I'll, I'll request the table and uh, the library running the closing in 20 minutes. Rent the current chair in copier. Okay. Well, an extension to the next meeting. Yeah, extension to the time? next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right Good enough. Then we'll table us. Uh, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's um, Russ. That's one, two. Okay. We're on to a P1930, which is 41 Styles Lane. Um, Are we taking the John? Cam yeah. With and this? we're going to take the cam with this, uh, Pam, uh, which is P. Uh, 19 dash 30 a uh, is Joe around somewhere uh, did somebody give him a call in. well maybe he went home I don't know <laughs> I don't think <laughs> that would so. be weird I think he may be on the hallway uh, yeah, could you see for there? me thank you <laughs> I like kind of having a doorman this is very helpful I got him. Thank you. Right. Good job. We're not, we're not doing too bad. Hmm? We're not doing too bad. So much water right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Joe is back and we can it's continue. Freezing. Uh, carry on, John. Okay, so Mr. Salome, you sitting on this application? He is. These applications. Well, I'm John Parisi, I'm an attorney here. I live in North Haven, practice in Hamden. I'm here on behalf of Pharmacy and Upjohn LLC, a wholly owned subsidiary of Pfizer, which is the successor to the Upjohn company. Uh, this application, these applications, my client seeks final uh, approval for the final stage of site-wide remediation as ordered by uh, the federal DEP. EPA and state uh, deeds. Let me repeat that. Final stage of the site-wide remediation. I mean we'll never see you again? I'm not promising that, Mr. Okay. <laughs> the property consists of some 80 acres uh, at 41 Styles Lane. Uh, it was Upjohn's manufacturing facility, uh, although all manufacturing ceased in 1993. Uh, since that time, on-site activities consisted of, uh, for study in the site, various remediation programs, uh, and there is a series of purge wells, or collection wells, between the water treatment plant and uh, down gradient along the Quinnipiac River, which intercepts groundwater, pumps it into the water treatment facility, water treatment facility, treats it, and then discharges uh, the water into the Quinnipiac yes. River uh, pursuant to a, a point discharge permit uh, issued by DEEP. Uh, property boundaries are uh, west by the railroad tracks. There is a grade crossing in Stiles Lane. Uh, south by various industrial properties on Sackett Point Road, including the, uh, the application you just heard. Uh, east by the Quinnipiac River, and north by the uh, Route 40 connector, uh, where the site is most visible to the public as you're on the Route 40 connector getting on to 91 South. If you look to the right, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but for the audience at home, that's how you see the, this site. Uh, the groundwater treatment facility, uh, when it was installed, uh, built, created, was state-of-the-art and there have been various upgrades along the way uh, and it's still a state-of-the-art facility. In addition to Connecticut Deep, uh, there's oversight by the United States Environmental Protection Agency and uh, Pfizer has worked very closely with both Deep and the EPA uh, to get us to where we are tonight. Uh, and where we are tonight is we're asking for the Commission's approval to install two open site structures that will serve as a, a meeting area and a possible shelter along the nature trail that is already uh, in existence. Uh, I walked it last month with uh, Russ Downey and uh, Tom Donahue from Pfizer uh, before our wetlands meeting. Um, 
and we want to install seven informational placards mm -hmm. along that trail. Uh, I've been before you many times uh, regarding this property. As a matter of fact, uh, thinking about it, I've, I've represented the owners of this property for most of my professional career. So it's kind of weird standing here before you tonight saying uh, this could be it. Uh, during that time, the veterans on the commission will remember that we've uh, gotten uh, approval for some uh, time-tested solutions and some innovative uh, measures, uh, all of which brought us to where we are tonight. Uh, Wood Woodward and Curran is represented by Alan Benvenides, uh, who will fill you in on the details of where these uh, structures are going. Basically, it's intended to afford um, those groups that, that are visiting the site, walking along the nature trail, a place to meet and assemble, and then if there should be uh, inclement weather, they can either retreat to the structure or move to the one at the, uh, the other end of the site. Uh, I have to say I'm pretty proud that uh, we're here this evening, and I have a, a, a bit of a, a, a regret that Tom Palumbo and a Negatilia are not around. Uh, but we're here. I thank you for your consideration. I'll ask Mr. Benjamin to uh, continue. Unless there's any questions for me. Nope. Not at the moment, Josh. It's funny in Thank you. My name is Alan Benavides. I'm from Watered and Curran. I'm Senior Vice President with the firm. Uh, this is my first time in front of the uh, board regarding the project in Lake uh, 3 Parisi. Um, this is really the final piece to what's been a very long, extensive, um, both environmental re remediation as well as environmental restoration of the site. Uh, as John indicated, it, the site's been remediated, it's been vegetated, the walking trails have been constructed throughout the site, and approximately 12 acres of wetlands restored, both uh, inland wetlands, approximately 6.3 acres, as well as coastal wetlands. So this is the very final piece of what's been a long uh, story that's resulted in a very successful project, and we're at the final stages tonight. Uh, this is what's being proposed, so they're blown up here. Essentially two shelters, uh, 20 by 20, uh, open shelters, uh, seven trail markers, and one kiosk. Uh, relatively straightforward, um, I'll show you a plan that shows the site. The <coughs> entrance is over here as you come into the site. There's now a parking area that's been created at the entrance of the site. Um, what you see here, these are the former waste areas, you can see the topography here. The dark green are inland wetland areas, the lighter green are buffer zones to those wetland areas. So that gives you a sense of the uh, um, wetland areas. The um, coastal management zone is located right here. So essentially the entirety of the site is within the coastal management zone. What's being proposed is the shelter is to be located here in here, and the purpose of this is really enhance the visitor's experience of the site. So you can currently walk the trails. Um, there's a process with Pfizer where gaining access to the site essentially is to enjoy what the final benefits of the site and remediation is and the restoration. So the two shelters, and then you can see probably more clearly on your um, drawings there, there's locations where these markers will be installed throughout the site. So as you're walking along, it provides information about what you're seeing. So that's essentially the project, relatively straightforward. It's uh, now it, it's outside of the required uh, zoning setbacks. Um, no variances are required, and again, the purpose is really to enhance the business experience. So, with that, uh, I'll uh, go to back to the commission. Okay. Any questions, Rock? I just get one real simple question: If somebody was interested in having one of these tours, you know. Is Pfizer's number in the phone book, or how do, how do you? Yeah, I mean, there's a number in here, but it's all X'd out. We have Attorney Parisi's we number call, if we want to call him. Parisi, but. I've got his home number. <laughs> I have a cell phone. Call myself, call, call me, call, call he, call he doesn't me. call you back. He won't call you back, though. But I, I'm, uh, 
a good question, Mr. Pack. Yeah, I, mean, so I, I was going to If get some high school there. teacher wanted to take their class through, how do they right. do that? Or the Rotary Club might yeah. be interested, yeah. Sure. At some point, uh, <coughs> Pfizer uh, is actually in talks with a couple of not for profit uh, environmental groups. Uh, I know, uh, well, Russ had asked me not to mention specifics, but there are a couple of groups he's talking to that would uh, serve as a conduit. Uh, and uh, afford accessibility to the site. And just to, to be clear, so that we don't have people showing up and walking around the site, this is still a, an area where there is environmental cleanup going on. It is not unlimited access. Uh, access is restricted. The entire site uh, is uh, well, I, fenced I, in. I get it. Yeah. I know it's restricted access. I'm just simply asking the question, how will the general public know how to ask permission for a tour? As we get to, I, I think this spring, the details of how that happens will be uh, completed and published and uh, made available through. Uh, That's the question. Uh, yeah. What's the through? Can you know, just, how how will it be disseminated to yeah. various groups throughout town? I know that it's limited. I see that they have it on the air. No groups right. more than thirty. And you got to call, and he, Russ has his hand up, so I think he's probably really going to be able to. Tell sure. Us. Why don't you come on right over here and get up to the mic? <coughs> My name is Russell Downey. I'm a director with Pfizer, responsible for environmental remediation of the former Rock John site. What we're doing right now is we put out an expression of interest to a few different nonprofit organizations. Um, it's under confidentiality right now, so I'm not. Understand. To tell you, but what we're hoping to do by next spring is have one of these nonprofit groups um, retained and then uh, set up a dedicated website. We have a dedicated website now, but alter that such that people can use that website to contact people with either through this organization through phone numbers or to actually sign in and make requests for scheduled visits. So our intent is to try to open this up to school groups um, and to other interested organizations, whether it be Audubon, the Hayden Trail Association, et cetera. So those details aren't fully known yet, but we expect by spring they will be known, and we will set up a, a dedicated website with contact information and, and try to disseminate through the town um, you know, how to make those connections. And you'll have that website on a sign on the front gate? so that people will know where to find it? As of now, we don't. Well, we have had a dedicated website for a number of years, as you know. But what we don't have is we don't have a sign up front that has a dedicated website on it. What we would do is probably um, set that up so someone could read a sign at the front gate for a dedicated website. Okay. That's going to be my only condition of approval. Understood. <laughs> It, there's a dedicated website. You, you said, as we know, I didn't know. Yeah. There's a dedicated nobody, website nobody for this site now. There is, and I'll even say it for uh, people listening. So it's www.upjohnnorthhaven.com. Yeah. Okay. So it's huh. all those three words together: www in front of it and .com at the end. Yeah. If you go into that, we actually put information on our progress um, in terms of you know where we are in remediation, and we actually have links to things like annual reports and, and, and things like that. So uh, we've had it, we, we tried to keep that dedicated website for a period of time back when we were doing a lot of the charade, charades, I don't know if I'm saying the term correctly, but um, way back when when we were looking at you know, future uses for the site, yeah. we've tried to continue that. So I apologize that that hasn't been more known. Okay. Wait, let okay. Me, you're going to make it more known. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let me just congratulate sure. you guys. This is a terrific, terrific presentation, and, and what you've done is a great job. It looks looks it looks awesome. It does. Follow up on that. The construction is anticipated for assuming that the you know, approvals issued for this year. So, in starting construction in November, December, trying to get it done so the next uh, spring it is available. Great. Right. John, I I just like to thank the commission for the many uh, courtesies and consideration given to my client and to me over the course of probably 25, 30 years. It's, it's, it has it's been a really long time, been, I can uh, tell you that. Uh, you know, quite, quite a uh, project. So glad to, glad to be here tonight. I respectfully ask that you approve the site plan and the coastal area management site plan. Sure. Thank you. Okay, John, thank you. And thank you. And you.
Okay. Um, Be before Mr. Parisi leaves the building, I just I just want to say that uh, I. It had a, a critical omission when you asked about the agenda. I was just thinking about public hearings, but the next item uh, for 319 Washington Avenue, this uh, late this morning, I received a request from Mr. Parisi to to postpone that item until next month in order to enable them to respond to the land use and engineering comments. Okay. So sorry about that. I didn't mention it. As long as we're, we're on that topic, uh, I think we we counted up the days and it's 64. So if, uh, uh, if if we need an extension at any point, I've told Mr. Fredrickson that we'll you know certainly do with the owner and the applicant. We'll, we'll extend your time to uh, act on the application for second Okay. Thank you. So Thank you, Jeff. So so we got. Um, mm -hmm. No so nine thought. So we're not going to hear. Correct. Okay. 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 So we got. P19-30 is all. This looks great. This looks Okay. Uh, moving forward here, we're going on to uh, P19-33 is Bernard Road, number 10 Bernard Road. Is there? It just went off.
anticipates relocating. He's got six employees right now at the Lombard Street location. They can service the same number of cars at the Lombard Street location. But for those of you who have been by that location, he's on a very narrow lot and he's got to move the vehicles in and out every night. Um, he anticipates moving those six employees over to this location. Um, but all the work for the vehicles, he's got enough room in there to, to work indoors. Final request is uh, we are asking for a sidewalk uh, waiver. There are properties in an industrial area. There are no sidewalks up and down the Bernard Street. As a matter of fact, I think sidewalks may be a hazard. I don't think this is an area where you're going to want to encourage pedestrian traffic. There's a number of automotive, automotive uses there. Lombard's is there. Skip Tucker and Power Paving is down at the end of the road. Um, there's a couple other industrial uh, type uses that are down on Bernard Street. So we are requesting that the commission grant the uh, sidewalk waiver relative to this application. What do you start with, Adam? Appreciate it. Any questions? Sure. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, in general, I have no problem with the application. My only problem relates to issues we have with numerous auto body shops, and that is excessive parking of vehicles being worked on. Um, I see you've got basically two parking areas here. Um, and if I vote to approve this, I'm going to want any of the cars being worked on to be restricted to the back area. In the area that's along Bernard Road, I think that's perfect for, for staff and for visitors. But basically, I don't want to see a car that's being worked on or stored on while it's being worked within 100 feet of Bernard Road or McDermott Road. That leaves the whole back parking lot and a little bit of the side and the inside of the building. But I don't want to see any cars sitting there forever, you know, out close to the street. That's just one of the conditions yeah. from the ZBA was that no outdoor storage of vehicles is permitted overnight. Yeah, none. Yeah, none. Sure. Okay. Well, right. I just to out the ZBA Right. Yeah, you pay I, 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 I'm money. just saying that back lot you can't see from the street. Right. So I personally don't have a problem if there's a car yeah, don't say sitting that. back really? there. As long as you can't see them from the street, well, then I'd be happy. But well, we, they're all I, pretty, I, pretty, okay. Pretty that, I think that condition's got to apply to us too, obviously. No auto sales and no outdoor storage of vehicles yeah. permitted overnight. So yep. Other than that, I agree with them completely. I don't see so, any issues. So you're there. saying the ZBA approval said no outdoor storage? That's what it says. Right. It says none. Right. In the no. Okay. Well, that's more than I would ask for. Okay. Anything else, Mark? No. Nope. Joe? No. No, good. Well, that's good. Jim? Good. 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 You don't have Okay. To. Okay. Well, that covers it. Okay. Uh, staff? Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Oh, we should do the changes of use in case there's people. Yeah, I'm going to do the right. other right now. So the, that, well, we're going to do the other and the uh, changes of use. Yeah, that's fine. Both At least the things. change of use. Whichever. Okay, yeah. change of use. Uh, 87 State Street. Uh, hold on, hold on. We got something under other. Okay. Wait, you, want, look. you want that? Okay. Hold on, Miss. I'm sorry. Okay, under other, we got 610 Washington Avenue. What is that? Someone here for that? It's a Mercedes Benz charging oh, yeah. station. <laughs> um, Jake Morrow, uh, Morrow Motors Incorporated, Vice President, um, doing business as BMW and Mercedes Benz. <laughs> So I'm, on, I'm here on the building department's request. We are uh, we're installing um, some electrical charging units for the manufacturer. They are Mercedes-Benz. This is all us do Mercedes-Benz building. But um, Mercedes-Benz is coming out with a uh, fleet of electrical uh, 
fully electrical uh, vehicles um, starting in 2020. For, uh, completely the launch of the vehicle will be in the second quarter, and they anticipate the lineup to be nine vehicles by uh, 2025. Uh, they sent out Max General um, to do an analysis of uh, where to put the units and how many units we would need. So um, it's an obligation of the franchisee to install these units. Us and every uh, Mercedes uh, Benz franchisee in the country. So um, we went to pull the electrical permit and uh, we're asked where the placement would be. Uh, there's four units going in the front of the building. Those would be um, in the customer parking area. There's four units going in the inventory section of the property. And then there's four more units going along the side of the uh, service section where um, it would be for Six customer seven. cars that were in the service center. A total of 12? 12. Total of 12 units. Outside, nothing inside. No, no nothing inside. Nothing inside, okay. Uh, Jim? No, I'm, I'm a little confused. Isn't this a site plan issue? Yes. In the past, uh, for electric charging units, we only brought one in for a site plan on, down by Target, right. which was a freestanding um, tenant. That was a tenant where they were going to lease space and it was not associated with any other use. So what we did in the past with car dealers was we brought it in under the other. Yeah, which we've done with Nissan on Universal Drive um, and one other. There's 18 it's, of these. How many did Nissan have? Or 12 of these? 12. 12. 12, I'm sorry. Yeah, total of 12 there. What did Nissan have? Uh, right. uh, fewer than that. Right. I'm not sure. Yeah. This is 12. Well, it's, it's, it's up to you guys. Right. I brought it in. That's what we had done for car dealers. That's, you know. I, I, yeah. oh, go ahead. No, 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 that's it. I see it as a site plan I, issue. I see it as a site plan issue as well. well we, get, we can uh, talk about Ballard's it. Is, yeah. Ron, I, personally, much to, I'm sure, people's surprise, I don't have a problem with this. So. Mm. That's fine. Okay. Joe? I don't have any problem with it either. Yeah, all, all we would be doing was, uh, we'd be pulling up the uh, sidewalk out of foot and laying a little electrical on these units. You'd be doing what to the sidewalks? I didn't hear you. So the the sidewalk areas. Yeah. You'd be pulling the, the, that concrete up. You'd be pulling it up. And then laying it back down with new concrete. Have anything to do? You losing any spots? You changing any no, spots? No. So the spots wouldn't. It's not like a handicap spot, like where only handicapped vehicles are permitted to park. Uh, this wouldn't uh, only be a use for an electrical vehicle. You can park it, in, you know, any car that you would want there. It just so happens that there's an elect electrical unit there to charge an electrical car. I mean, for what I don't it's really worth, see, uh, sorry, in, my, in my opinion, this is going to happen more and more often. No doubt. There's more and more electric cars. It's not a big deal. It's a plug. I, I understand car. what it is, I, but. I personally think it would be too onerous for the typical owner to make them go through the time and money of a big site plan approval. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. it's a plug. Yeah. You know. And I don't see I, it that way, but I, that's I why there's yeah. different people. Just, right. That's just my I opinion. I, I don't think we, I think this should be pretty easy. It's, frankly, I'd leave it up to staff for approving a plug next to a parking station, but that's just my opinion. Okay. Um, you know, Joe, you know, you're going to charge two people's cars or what? I don't believe so, no. Okay, yeah. Uh, what about an electric uh, a power outage? You got a generator? Yeah, it's hooked up to a panel in our uh, electrical uh, room. Yeah, because yeah, electric cars don't good unless you can win some shoes to it. Yeah. I don't really see a lot of demand for it. Uh, to be quite honest, we went through this with BMW uh, about five years ago. We probably sell around two electric vehicles per year. But yeah. Uh, yeah. The range that really, you know, just doesn't meet our demographic in our area. They think it's coming. That's what they told us at Target, too. It's mandatory. We can't, I know. The yeah, generators right. you're talking it. about are already in place, right? Yeah, it goes right to our paneling. Okay. Out of our So. Joe? You good? Yeah. Anybody here? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much.
Okay, um, going on a change of use, 87 State Street. I'm sorry, young lady. I'm not going to stop you this time. What happened independent locksmith is going to become a sign of Okay. So, sorry about that. Not a big deal, but uh, the locksmiths are serving us and what they're proposing to be retail. So, to, uh, Understood. Okay. Can you tell us just a little bit about what you'll do, what it does? Um, it's a, a clothing consignment store. It's selling women's uh, clothing accessories. So, they give it to just sell and you, do you have hours of operation? I could defer to the owner of the business. You what? Yeah, the that's fine. Right there. Name, first your name. Just Okay. Just tell us a little bit about what you're going to do. So it's just a consignment shop. Um, I have a few closets in my house and we're just trying to um, resell the, the stuff for consignment. Okay, and you're going to, other people are going to come in, bring their clothes Actually, to you? No. no. Um, we're going to just do, I have so much stuff. I have another partner that's working with me. Um, seven closets in my house. She has a couple of closets in hers. We have um, closets in Pennsylvania. So it's primarily our stuff. Okay. Cool. So you're going to bring the stuff up it? here? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, how is this stuff going to keep coming? I mean, you just yeah. plan to be there and get rid of your stuff? No, right? we, we plan to stay. But since we're in business, we want to see how it works first. Hmm. Um, but we plan, we definitely plan to stay. We, we generate a lot of stuff over the years. Um, and we get rid of it all the time. Okay. We shop a lot. So. I, I get you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Goodwill, here I come. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, young lady. <laughs> okay, um, 276 State Street. Don't tell me you're going to unload your closets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Liz DeSarbo, Elizabeth DeSarbo. <coughs> Close your left hand, please. D-E-S-A-R-B-L. And I'm going to hopefully open move my salon that I have in Hamden to the location in North Haven. Hair salon? Yes. Nails, anything else? Um, uh, I, facial well, stuff? Right now I only have nails, but I'm hoping, I mean, I only have hair. Okay. I'm hoping to have nails and um, uh, skin care or like a waxing, depending on, and, and pedicures as well. Right now I just do hair. I was always next to with some of these Okay. How, how large is your shop? It won't be 900 square feet. Mm -hmm. and more than one? Uh, um, it's me and I have another girl that rents space for me. Oh, I see. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Emily. 311 Washington Avenue. minority cleaning company specializing in brand new construction, mostly multi-unit apartments, and we are relocating from North Burnford to here in North Haven. And I, it was previously a retail wine cellar, and I would like to change it to office and warehouse storage. Oh, okay. Okay. Any questions? I, I just don't understand what you do. I don't know either. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we're a plumbing company. We don't do plumbing. Plumbing. Okay. Yes. Uh, we generate about three million dollars a year. Uh, we mostly do uh, new construction housing units. If you're familiar with Mather Street in Hamden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Hamden Specialty Housing. Yeah. We had 14 employees that helped do all the plumbing for it. Okay. Oh. So when you say, but when you say storage, what are you intending to store? Materials that we have. Inside, outside? Inside. Inside. Well, that's an, an interesting uh, 
point. Right. Um, one one of the things that they were not aware of is that uh, outdoor storage does require a specific approval. Yeah. A site plan approval. But they're not asking for outdoor, right? I'm asking Wait. after I get approved here. Well, but you're going to come back. Well, here's the issue, just to be clear. I thought it was most productive. Uh, you came in, I don't know, 10 days ago or whatever. All right, if we can get the use approved, that's fine. There is a trailer uh, that has been brought on the site um, that is as yet uh, unpermitted. So that, that's the issue. I just wanted to make sure everybody's clear about and that. I like to apologize for yeah. that. Honestly, we, we found this space in our haven. We really liked it, and it fit our business needs. And we were not advised by our realtor or um, our landlord's realtor about all these issues. And so yes. we're trying to take time to address them and do the right thing. Sure. But so that we're clear, I mean, we're, we're concerned about outside storage. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty narrow, we're, we're very familiar with the lot. It's a very mm -hmm. narrow lot. So you're going to have to come in with a very specific proposal about what you're going to do. And I can't tell you that what you want to do is what you're going to be able to do. So long as we're on the same page. I don't have any problem with changing the use of the building. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It was... Uh, Oh, we've got 473 Washington Avenue. I lost this one. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I'm owner of Mace Realty Associates, 473 Washington Avenue. I have uh, 15 tenants there, and I had a tenant that moved out a couple of months ago. Uh, we had a machine shop. <clears throat> oh, I saw that. I have a new tenant that wants to go in there, and they're an electrical component supply company. They're uh, relocating, a uh, small business relocated from uh, New Hampshire uh, to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So, where was where, where where going from there? What was that? I did take a look. Uh, it was a machine <laughs> shop, which is a specific use, mm -hmm. and uh, the proposal is for really warehousing it was a small office so um i did go down mr o'brien asked me to come down and take a look but they require no outdoor storage um enough i walked in the space looked pretty clean computer components uh it's kind of the hardware that they put computers in uh the, the racks etc what they distribute, they don't make anything. Uh, but everything is inside, so nothing to store it outside. Good enough. There's an okay. overhead door, I think, that they yes, get it's fine. Welcome to Connecticut. Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Okay. That's it. Okay, we're going to go into deliberation after a short break. Okay. We weren't on, we weren't on camera, I don't, were well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, folks, we're back after the, uh, after the break. I was only kidding uh, about killing him. Can I get a Jesus. motion to go into deliberation? I'll make a motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay, deliberation. And the first thing we're going to talk about here is a, uh, is a continuation of the, uh, of the uh, 19, uh, P19-25, the, uh, the luxury home on Warner Road. And we can just, uh, we have that, and so I'm gonna take a motion on that. I'll make a motion that we continue. Okay. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's done. Um, very good. It, and since we, we took those two applications together, the one- right. Motion. motion covers right. both. Okay. Take both. Yes. So, Teresa made the motion? Yes. And who seconded it? Ron. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next one right over here to P19-32. And that is the LLC owners on Connecticut investment development that we were just talking about, splitting that lot into two. And they're asking for a waiver of the trees and sidewalks. Okay I would that. like to have a motion to approve 
waiving the trees and the sidewalks. I'll make a motion that we approve waiving the sidewalks. Okay. I'll second I, that motion. Okay. Now, can we have some discussion? Sure. We were, I was just advised by our town engineer, he believes there are trees already there uh, adjacent to the first building. My, I would amend the motion to say that if the trees are already there, they just don't remove them. I'm satisfied if they're there that they stay there. If they are not there, which is what I thought the applicant told us, I think they should have to put in the trees. But if they're there, I'm okay with that they're already there. Okay, good enough. So we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that takes care of that one. Very good. Uh, we'll go down to uh, P19-28. Um, this is the uh, uh, the sun runner there, the 400 second point road, but staff is going to be, they asked for a con uh, to table this, so we tabled it. And get a motion to table? I'll make a motion to table this. I second that motion. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's done. And that uh, cam goes with that, uh, right. Pam. Yeah. There you go. Uh, okay. Bird. Okay, now we have. Um, Just note I didn't vote on that. Yeah. Because I, it was a, it, that's yeah. Lou, Lou, Lou voted on it. Joe didn't sit. <laughs> okay, now we have uh, P19 30, and that's the up John, John Parisi district. I'd like to get a motion to approve the site plan. Make a motion to approve. I have a second. I'll second it. Can we discuss it? Sure. I'd like to make the condition to approve, or make the motion to approve conditional that they post a sign with a phone number or website for the general public to contact them. I don't have a problem with that, but when? Because they don't have that in place yet. So when are you talking about them doing it? They said they were going to do it next spring. Within six months. That's that's fine. I'm a hard to argue. Uh, he said ten so months. We're getting like nine. Nine months. Nine. Okay, within a year. Sorry, I thought you had six yes. months. How about within a year? <laughs> within a year. That's it. Okay. Can't go over this. Okay, so amend it. I'll. Okay, so my take take Ron's amendment with that motion to approve. So okay. So let me make sure we get this. So you like. Post posted um, on the, at the at the Styles Lane uh, entrance. Uh, a sign no, I think that's good. Um, I think bearing that's good. a contact number for tours and access. Yes. Within what, one year, right? What do we say? Within a year? Within That's a year. That's fine. Okay, good enough. I have a motion and a second. Do we have that? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the CAM? We'll make a motion to approve the CAM. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Okay, the, uh, that one's off. Now we have uh, P1933. This is the... Uh, Tim Lee's uh, on Bernard Road, the uh, right. body shop. I'll make a motion to approve with all staff conditions. Okay. I have a motion to approve and a second. Wait a minute. Wait. Just, it, it, I'll second it, but I wanted not only staff conditions, but the conditions that ZBA put on it would also be our conditions. That right. is that there's no, no, no sales storage. and no outside storage at all. Very good. That's good. Okay. My, we have a mo motion is amended as Jim just stated. I'll second it. for a sidewalk waiver, right? No sidewalk. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll 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 yeah. we'll Correct. We'll we'll with decide. the sidewalk waived. So right. I'll second that. Okay. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sidewalks took a beating today. Good night. All right. Um, here we go to um, 610 Washington Avenue, the BMW deal of four. Four, four, a total of 12 electrical plugs to, to uh, charge cars at uh, Morrow Motor. Can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Have a motion, a second. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. opposed. Okay. Carrie was 3 2. Teresa and I. Okay, we're going to change the views. 87 State Street. I make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Oh. All right. We're at change of use. 87 is the first one. So Teresa made the motion? Yep. Okay. And Ron seconded? Yes. Yeah. Are we good? No, no, I'm sorry. It's okay. Take your time. And Ron. Second. Thank you. Okay. We, do we have a motion and a second? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. On 276 State Street, a hair a change to a hair shop. Um, a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. On the second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 310 Washington Avenue. 311. That's uh, 311, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'll make Jim. the motion to approve. Okay. Have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, 473 Washington Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Correspondents can check that. Can I get a motion to move to approve the September 9, 2019 minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. The, uh, yeah, you got to do bonds yet. still, you know. Well, well, you could, yeah. We could well, do the minutes. Okay, yeah. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, Perfect. Guys, hold on a second. Yeah, take, take the time. Yeah. Teresa had the yes. motion, Ron had yes. the second. They were approved. So, Bert, if you want to go back to the extension. I'm going back to the end. I just want to Okay. Okay, we're going back to extension. Could you, uh, P-20. 18 18-20. Four zero four Washington Avenue extension. Did you so the the bank? Well, I think they're um, uh, moving through the process, um, uh, and I think they're they've had some issues with DOT. Who's they? Uh, that was a fantasia okay. going to housing. All right. Wow. Um, oh. There was a in particular. We, we have a letter from Robert Mangino, architect, uh, re requesting an extension of six months to complete the DOT approval process. Okay. I don't have a problem. I'll make a motion to approve. Have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Very good. That was a week. That was Aye. begrudging. All right. Um, Bond releases. You're front and center now, boss. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Okay, so 165 Washington Ave. That's Town Fair Tire. Yep. Uh, everything's looking good out there. Um, so I'm recommending full full release on the twenty thousand dollar bond. Uh, let me just comment. I thought they yep. did a terrific Let's do job. Take these one at a time when you, when you call them up. Okay. Ron makes a motion. I'll second it. Yeah, and it looks great. All in Don't favor? Start. Aye. Aye. Uh, who seconded? Teresa. No, Jim. Jim, did. Jim I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, next, uh, Andy. Next one is 415 Washington Ave Partners, 49 Washington Ave. That is the Amazon facility. I'm sorry, hold on a second. I've lost your number two bond. 409 Washington Ave. Oh, 409 Washington Ave. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, everything is set. Um, there is a few things that I wanted to note. Right. Because um, there was a few changes to the site plan from what was approved. I didn't consider any of them significant enough to make a big deal about it, but I did want to note some of the things that I that I discovered in the Asbil. Um, they added a new bus stop, their main north-south driveway that runs at the back side of the parking lot there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they had a bus stop incorporated into the design. They put another one on the other side of the driveway uh, for you know for the regular bus traffic and the uh, the uh, uh, the bus company actually does circle through their lot and yep. pick people up and drop people off several times a day. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Site grades. Site grades didn't exactly follow what they, what the plan was. Generally, they're about six inches lower than what uh, was originally proposed. But again, 
I didn't see any any major issue right. with it. Um, they added a bathroom to the gatehouse. I don't care. Yeah. What I what I don't know is was there discussion that went on with Jonathan at the time. I'm not really sure, but it really isn't that big a deal. Well, it's nice of them for the guard. Yeah, yeah. they have a force yeah. right, they have a force that runs the entire <laughs> <the cemetery. laughs> I, I, We both use bathrooms. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> They did make a few changes to the drainage system. Generally, it was it was kind of rerouting. Uh, pipe sizes were generally larger than what was originally proposed. So, do you need to know that somewhere? Should that be on some plan somewhere? Well, it's on their as built. So, All right. yeah. So we've got that covered in the okay. as built. That's fine. Um, and that was really it for the most part. Everything else looks fine. Yep. There was an issue with trash along the outside of their parking lot, the slope that runs through there. Uh, there was a, a, a bunch of trash that had accumulated there, and uh, Laura noted it, and they went out immediately, and within a couple of days, it was all taken care of. So I, I got to give them some credit for, you know, for addressing staff comments right away. Okay. They have robots pick up the trash. Yeah, <laughs> okay, can we give a motion to approve. So that was it. How much is that one? One seventy. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that one. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next one. Uh, next Andy. one is the EVGO. We actually talked about that tonight. Um, ah. Oh, I'm sorry. That is 100 Universal Drive North. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The 1713, $2,500 bond. Uh, uh, again, they made some changes to what was originally approved. All of their equipment was originally contained within one enclosure area with, with some vegetation, mm -hmm. uh, and they actually separated one piece of equipment out. But that's also contained within a vegetated area, so I didn't really see it of anything, anything of any significance to okay. talk about. So I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Okay, a motion to second. Yes. Okay, next one, 29 State Street. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, wait. I'm sorry. We have a motion to second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Wow. Okay. Very good. Nice Jump in the gun. Okay, next one, 29 State Street. Um, that's that uh, uh, little historic building that was renovated, turned into apartments. Um, that's that's done. A uh, $14,000 bond. Everything looks good to me. Everything's okay. done. I can make a motion to approve. You have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. McDermott Road. And the last one is 24 McDermott Road. Um, this is an oldie, 9622 application number. Um, the work that was approved uh, was, I think it was new equipment that was going to be installed at the facility. And the work never proceeded. So this is one of those legacy ones that's been kicking around for a long time. There's really no reason to hold the bond. Uh, they never did the work. They, they couldn't do the work now because the, the permit is expired, but we're still holding the bond on. Okay. So, did they ask for the bond back? They did. They, they did. did. Oh, all right. At least okay. they caught up with it. Um, yeah, motion. somebody caught up with it, right? Motion to approve. Take them 25 years. I'll make a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Motion second. Uh, yep. Come on. All in favor? 20, 25 on. Just 25 on. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Aye. Good enough. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Let's see. The minutes are done. Aye. Okay. We can do correspondence. That's uh, Ed Homer. Thank you for your uh, thank you for your time on the commission. Uh, so everybody knows that Homer has resigned from the commission, and we have a new uh, a new a new gentleman coming on. So he'll be coming on next month, I presume, and uh, we'll talk about that then. Okay. Thereafter, if there's anything else you guys want, can I get a motion to approve the correspondence? I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve. You don't approve correspondence. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is what it is. Okay. Right. The only reason I put this in, I, you got the information uh, for, from uh, Eversource. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's actually from a long meandering email that was unclear. We asked for clarification, and Leslie kind of trimmed this a bit and created this document. Bottom line is, they're going to be doing some work on those lines. I just figure, you guys, it's not really a land use thing, but just personally, just so you know, that they're going to be they doing it. Haven't they been doing it for a while now? This is a street. new announcement for a, for a new area of work. Really? Hmm. So we tried to clarify. Yeah, the, line, the North North Square for Tom Warren. Yes. yes. They, it, they, they built a wooden roadway. My opinion is there's going to be towers there. 
Can we, can well, we, I don't know. <laughs> can we do this after um, this particular can we what there? Towers. Yeah, this particular. Can we do this after that, but If there's, this we can keep an eye on it. They spent a lot of money on a, on a wooden roadway. Wooden roadway. Can you get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, somebody. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.